Welcome back to GS Pro V2 Tips, and yes, it's your host, Ralph P., and yes, I know I've been away for a very, very long time. So my sincere apologies to all my subscribers, fans, and those who tune in on a regular basis to find out the latest and greatest on what's happening with GS Pro version 2. Well, they've done it. The fall release is a major update, and I can't wait to jump into it with you all here soon. So as I said, the fall release of GS Pro V2 is imminently about to drop. Currently, it's in the beta or the public beta that is available to everybody. And in a moment, I'll show you how to install and get that public beta. Now, keep in mind that with a beta comes the fact that things may be broken. And what we're really asking you to do when you join the public beta is to make sure you take notes on what's broken. Let's not complain about what's broken, but send an email to the GS Pro support at gsprogolf.com and let them know what bug you found. The best thing that you can do is report the information as best you can. Screenshots, if they're available, would be very, very helpful in doing this. So let's jump right into, first of all, what is in the new fall release. The new fall release is packed. It's currently public beta version 2.9.1.1. And as a matter of fact, as I'm recording this, there's an update to even the public beta release. But the introduction to the public beta was refreshing of the overall design and feel. There's been a complete revamp of the course structure of how you go into load up a regular course for a local play, how you search, how you filter. Huge change. There should be some great things in there for you to see soon. The course server change has been updated. And this is going to refer to how things are going to be managed when it pertains to your game side golf courses, Patreon, and things of that nature. And there's going to be more to come in that area, but do not fear. This is not something that's going to hurt you. This is simply something that's going to actually give you more versatility and also in a way to help keep honest people honest. Distance challenges have been added. And what I mean by that, now you can have custom challenges for 30 yards, 60 yards, 90 yards. There's different yardages already preset up for you. The introduction of the ultimate long drive. And the partnership that it has now with GS Pro and being able to compete in an ultimate long drive competition at home. More to come on that. I will probably be doing a separate video dedicated just to the ultimate long drive. Support for the new um, OPCD. OPCD is the course building software that we use to build golf courses. All of it is free. All of it you can learn. Videos on how to create golf courses are available to you if you want to start. Version 5 of that software is in the works, so this now supports version 5. There's some more sound settings, on-screen keyboard settings, um, meaning that you can use an onboard keyboard if you have a touchscreen especially. Um, In-game ball ready indicator. So if you have a foresight and you put your ball down in the foresight, you're, you're just uh, quad or your GC3, um, and it tells you the green light that says the ball's ready, you can now see that in the game. And that's coming soon for Unicore players as well. Ball physics have been refined, especially those low punch shots that are supposed to run out, as well as those high spinny green side shots um, that are supposed to stop on the second bounce. All of that is working much better. A language translation, translation system has been added. Lots of bug fixes, a brand new range, version 3, that's coming soon. Can't talk about it yet, but it's pretty epic. It's been something that I've enjoyed using very much. There's also a new web portal so that you will be able to log in and get um, shots, uh, strokes gain statistics. You'll be able to get data about your rounds and about your golf game online, about how far you're hitting your clubs. Every shot that you've taken is going to be available in this portal. 
and additional launch monitor support is also coming soon. More to be talked about there at the official release, which is yet to be determined. So as you can see, they have packed in a lot of features, updates into this fall release. The most amazing thing though, is just the visual changes that have taken place that has made the menu system a lot smoother in my personal opinion. I think it looks very cleaned up and very professionally done. Great job, GS Pro. Now, let's jump into some of these features. The first part is, how do I get the public beta? How do I load it? Let's talk about that. All right, so we're here in GS Pro. In order to get the public beta, simply go over to settings. Go to, if you could be in players, game, visual. Go to game. And down here in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see load public beta right here. Click it and a pot dialog box will pop up. This dialog box is telling you that G we need to restart GS Pro and it's going to build an unstable. All right. So if you have any issues, please report the issues. So we close that, save that, and we're going to restart GS Pro. So exit. Now, when you restart GS Pro, you're going to be presented with this particular screen right here, all right? And it's telling you that you're grabbing the public beta, which is currently a version 2.9.1.5. See? I told you it was updated while I was recording this. You're now presented with the beautiful new screen of what has become the new fall release of GS Pro and what that interface looks like. Absolutely stunning and amazing. The menu system has been updated as far as the look and feel. I must say, it is probably the best looking GS Pro version I have ever seen to date. So let's jump right into some of the new things that are here. And of course, let's look at the local match and let's look at the new course management system that's being presented to us. As you can see here, your options have grown significantly. You can look at all the courses that you have installed, all the courses that are available, your favorite golf courses still. I don't, I'm surprised I don't have any, but everything you have installed, you can look at all of them. You can look at popular courses, newest courses, never played golf courses, which should be fantastic for those out there. You can sort by, you can turn these buttons on and off. So on, off, installed. You sort by name, all the same sorts that we had before. You can sort by difficulty now. You can sort by country and filter by country. So if you only want to look at, oh, let's see, let's do all golf courses, all golf courses in Australia, all golf courses in Canada, all golf courses that are fictional. All golf courses that are in Denmark, and of course, all golf courses that are in Japan. So let's put that back to all that I have installed. You want to say, I want a par three. I want it from, for a beginner. Tropical, Heathland, historic, links. Go to all. Links courses, historic courses, coastal courses, mountain courses, desert courses. It is all there. Now say you want to get lucky and just click on random course and you will be taken to a random golf course. Your filters are incredible. Again, this is how you go about putting in your favorites. These have updates available. So that way they can be updated. Aaron Hills is updated. So there we go. And that's that. All right, that takes care of the new system there. Now on to the practice area. The practice area, the, the practice range um, is the same. On course practice is the same. The new thing that's going to be coming in the practice area is the new version of the range. I can't talk about it yet. And I can't show it yet as it is coming soon. Next we have, um, we're going to go look at the Sim Golf Tournament. Nothing has really changed there um, except for the visualization of how it looks, the GUI interface. 
I'm currently using it on a second computer and I am in mouse mode versus simulator mode. Online matches um, is just the same there, just a nice GUI overhaul, nothing major there. Challenges. Let's talk about challenges. Operation 36, which everyone is already used to, a little bit of a GUI change and an update to some other courses. We now have a um, distance challenges, which I alluded to. 10 feet and 20, etc. for putting, which is fantastic as a new addition. You have 20, 30 yards. You have randomization between 15 and 30 yards, 100 yards, 125 yards, 150, all the way out. As you can see, there's been many new challenges updated. So also inside of the challenges, we have the custom skills test, which has been preloaded that you can download and create your own customs as you wish. You're also able to go to the ultimate long drive and compete there locally with your friends. Online ultimate long drive is not available with this release. Once ULD loads up, the golf course loads up, you are presented with the game interface. Again, I am going to go over this particular feature in its own video discussing all of the things that is soon to come as it pertains to the Ultimate Long Drive and GS Pro's unique partnership with one another. We also have the 60 Shot Skill Challenge. The 60 shot challenge is exactly what it was prior. There has been no change here. Now let's dive into the settings area. The settings area has also gotten a, a facelift as far as the graphical interface, but more importantly, it's also a little bit different on the layout. So as we click into settings, we have players. We have all the different players that are available to you. A nice little convenient delete key is here their particular golf bag and their setup, their progress in Operation 36. We also have the game menu. The game menu is going to have your metric imperial, the altitude and elevation that you're playing at. I don't know why I have it 1800, so I'll change that back to zero. Minimap location, bottom right, bottom left. Player rotation, uh, styles is gonna be the classic, which as I hit one, you hit one. And then whoever's furthest away hits next. Player gets to play out the entire hole without putting. And then there is also play the entire hole, finish the hole by putting, and then the next player will play out the entire hole. Realism. Realism is going to be your normal settings that we've always talked about. I'm always going to keep mine on realistic. But you can change it to casual, how much boost you want how much restriction do you want on the penalties of lie angles and trees and leaves and ground and rocks. Here's stuff for the system of where your golf courses are stored. I'm controlling it with a mouse, not a simulator. My um, server activations, uh, clear cache, reload, reset, download public beta, and then sounds, the new sound system. So we have the GS Pro sounds, golf course sounds, menu sounds, and the master overall sound. You can set these sound levels to whatever you would like. This should certainly appease to a lot of people out there. They want to hear the things on the golf course. They want to hear the ball. They want to hear the ball hit the fairway or hit the green, but they don't want to hear um, other background noises or whatever it may be or the menus. It's up to you. You can play with these and it's only going to get better. All right, what other settings did I miss? The visual settings. You have your enable gimme circle, aim indicator, show your ball ready indicator. You can turn that on or off. That's new. Distance display is going to be uh, when the ball is rolling on the fairway. Um, is the distance going to keep going down as, if, as you're getting closer to the cup? Or is the number going to keep getting bigger as you get further away from the tee box? Do you want to see the scorecard after the hole? And if so, for how many seconds? Hide user interface on the shot. The HUD will go nice and clean. Show who's up next message if you're playing in multiple players locally. Distance banners, 
club selectors and other items there. Your camera options, how it's going to work, how it's going to trail. And if you're playing in a situation where you cannot hit into the middle of your screen, you need to offset some. Here's how you set this up as well. Last piece I'm going to cover is setting up a local round. So let's go to the, uh, let's go to my favorite, Mattapani Springs. And now we have who is going to play, what tee boxes I'm going to play from, if it's going to be different than the match settings, and what color I'm going to play. The match settings is for everyone with this settings. If I add multiple people, then I could say, hey, um, John Wayne is going to be able to hit from the junior tees. Ralph and Babe Ruth are going to hit whatever is set in the match. So in the match, we have the round set up, stroke play, what tee box the match is going to be. We're going to send you guys back to the tips. The pins, Saturday, Sunday, Thursday, Friday, gimme circle, mulligans, and resume the round if you have a round that has already been started. How the course is going to be set up, your green firmness, your fairways, what elevation, which is the golf course, or locally, what you have set up, imp, and wind or not wind. Scoring and assistance, concedes, auto concede, break line indicator, putting, realism, handicap. Player setting here is going to be dictated on what it's set for in the player settings. I usually use force realistic for everybody. If you're going to use a handicap, or your, your GS Pro handicap, putting forgiveness, and you can actually have it auto aim your stuff. Golf course creator has also a list of recommended settings to play their golf course. So you can click that button. It'll set everything up, wind and all that to be what the course designer recommends for how to play this golf course. And lastly, it'll show you a quick rundown and whether it's a par three, par four, and the yardages for the card. Then you can simply click on play. And let's see what the interface looks like from here with the update. All right, now that Mattapanai is all loaded up, you can see that the golf course interface, the game interface, is slightly updated. The colors are very prominent in their display. Hole that you're playing is very prominent in its display. The move the ball marker is much different now and has been updated to be a little bit more visually appealing, as is your club selection, right hand or left hand, okay? Minimize that if you'd like. Now, take a shot. And hopefully I don't go in the water. Not very good with the mouse. I have a lot of stuff going on with the video camera. Not a bad shot. Up next. Yep. So, that's the new interface. I hope that it is something that you find appealing. All right, now that sums up the GS Pro V2 all release public beta quick start guide. And so just a quick introduction to what is now available. Again, keep an eye for my next video, which is going to be a deep dive into the ultimate long drive and what is coming for that in the partnership with GS Pro. Talk to you soon and thanks for watching. Hit them straight.